So in this video we're going to go over a full setup of the radio. So here's my S800, but if you got Tranus at least, um, we'll go through pretty much everything you need to do to get ready to fly your uh, S800. So we're going to go to menu, and we're going to do a new model. Hold the enter button, create model. We want to do a, we're just going to do airplane, because we just need four channels for INAV to use. So um, we have a motor, yes, we page to the next one. We have ailerons on one channel. We have flaps, no. We have air brakes, no. And we're going to leave those on rudder and elevator on the channels they're on. So this is kind of good to know for later. Um, I don't know why they don't put these in order, but we've got R, E, T, A, rudder, ele elevator, throttle, ailerons. So we're going to need that later in INAV. R, E, T, A is our I'm not gonna worry about an image name right now. Um, one other thing we really we need to do on here is all the way down towards the bottom. Um, we're going to bind, but not yet. Um, sorry, fail safe mode. We want it to fail safe to no pulses. Okay. Um, we'll come back to this page later when we do bind. Next page, flight modes, we're not going to worry about, all right, well, at least, inputs. So like I said, we've got RETA. Um, we're also going to need to do five. I, This is the order I do. You don't need to use this order, but um, it makes sense. That's what I do. Um, five, we've got arm. And I personally like to use the two position switch up top go back. Um, now the rest of them, you need an arm at a minimum. Um, the rest of them is going to depend on what modes you want to set up and um, what you're going to do with your navigation, things like that. Um, the, ideally, the number six you want to do for a uh, flight mode, so that would be if you're flying in manual, air mode or acro or um, air mode, which would be acro or horizon. So I'm going to make this one mode. Um, and then other ones you'd want to have maybe a uh, nav for your position hold or altitude hold or cruise. I actually like to have the nav um, set up for altitude hold at the mid position, or off would be off, and then mid position would be altitude hold, and then the full throw would be a altitude hold and cruise, which gives you a 3D cruise. Um, so kind of think of that stuff. What you um, you got to figure out what all you want to do, and then um, that'll determine where you're going to go with those. Um, for now, I'm just going to set up those two. Um, we'll go ahead and do more later. We'll go to the page over, and we got to actually, in the mixer, bring that over. All you have to do is go to the page, and then if you go back, you've got it set up. So we've got those, our arm and our mode also. Okay, so again, we only have the six channels for now. Any channels you use, you're going to need to do this for to get them to work properly. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you look here in the middle, you can see, so channel 5 right now is on the left, middle, I'm sorry, 6, left, middle, and then right. Um, the other thing we might need to do later, which we'll find when we get 9 out, is change the direction of the channel. You would do that here. We go back. Um, we're going to go to the next page. Curves I'm not going to worry about. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and bind up our receiver and uh, radio. Um, to help with this, I'm going to use, I've got just my 4S uh, battery, and I made up a little switch here. So I'm going to power it off. I'm going to plug that in, and then I'm going to just flip this over. That I actually have. Let's see, we'll go this way. So the receiver is facing up. Um, I'm gonna use a, need something to access the button. I don't know if you can see even this little button right there. 
kind of hard to see, I don't know. Um, it's a tiny, tiny little button you got to hit. Um, and then on the radio, what we're going to do is we'll go to the first page. If you go up, it actually is quicker to get there. I think seven's taken. I'm going to go to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the radio in the vine. Now we're going to do one through eight telemetry on. Then I'm going to, at the same time, push in the button on the receiver and power it up. And you see the lights like that. And then you hear the different beep from the radio. I believe this solid green light means we are bound. So what we'll do is we'll power it off. We'll power off the radio. And we'll power on the radio again first. So that's it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and connect to INAV and look at make sure our receiver is bound properly. So we'll go ahead and don't mind my dog growling in the background. Apply power because this flight controller needs battery power to get power to the receiver. You can see here we have our telemetry signal. So we go back over to INAV and we'll go to our receiver tab on that really slow laptop. Okay, so now we're good. So now you'll notice if I give a roll input, we go to 2000. I give pitch, we go 1,000, 2,000, yaw, 1,000, 2,000, throttles at zero, or 1,000, 2,000, and then we've got our on and our mode switch. So to show what I was talking about with the um, outputs page, we'll go in, so we'll go to menu, page, put it in here. And then we we'll go to the outputs page. So we still have now on channel 7, we've got negative 100 and 100. So what we'll do is we'll look on our receiver page, channel 7. Notice it's at 987. Then we'll go to 1500 in the middle, then it goes to 2011. So I'm going to go back down to the bottom. I'm going to go in here again, and I'll show you this is where the numbers, when I lower this, or when I raise this, I guess, actually, notice that as I'm doing that, it's adjusting there on my receiver's tab. And at 97.7 is where we're at 1000. So that's there. And then if I flip that switch to the top end, you'll notice when I change this one, it comes down. And right at 97.7 is where I hit 2000. So that's how I got the endpoint numbers. We've got the receiver set up, our channels are good, we've got an arm, we've got modes, we've got tune set up now, like I said, we'll do late, uh, more later um, and do those to your own personal preference. But um, next what we're going to do is we're going to um, set up the servos. Like I said before, I did not put the arms on the servos because I prefer to do that um, once I now is actually set up. I've found before with other receivers and possibly with iNav, I forget if I've done it with iNav or if I've learned by then. Um, using a servo centering tool like this one doesn't always get you what the receiver is going to do. So what I always do is power up the receiver at zero or um, mid put inputs and then let the servos go. So right now these servos, if I go to the servo tab and look, at rest they're at 1500. So what we're going to do is go ahead and pop them back out. I'm going to pull the screw. So at this exact moment, I'm not going to worry about gluing them in, but I am going to glue them in with hot glue. I use hot glue because it's a little bit easier to remove if I do need to, to get in there to change them. Um, a little denatured alcohol or... Um, De uh, what do you call them? mentholated spirits in the UK or I guess the rest of Europe will um, it'll make the hot glue release and it's a lot easier to pull them out than the uh, E6000 so 
Um, we've got those in there. So now what we'll do real quick to check them is we'll take our radio and I'm going to just put it right here so we've got it in the picture. So the way that a wing works, when I give a pitch input, the if I pitch up, both servos should pull forward, pulling the elevon up, making the nose go up. Currently, both are backwards, so we'll note that. The other with a elevon system. Sorry about the radio talking so much. Um, <laughs> when you're close to your so with something if you didn't know, when you're close with a receiver that has telemetry, anytime the radio and the receiver are too close, it's going to pop in and out. Actually, I could probably do it with my hand. Just getting them closer together. But um, to turn right, we're going to bring the, or if we turn that right, we're going to push this flap up, which would push that wing down. So that one's backwards also, and that one's backwards. But the good thing is they are moving opposite of each other. So this is going to be a real simple fix. So what we're going to do, we're going to our mixer tab. And we're going to come to our weights, and we're just going to make all of them opposite. And we'll save and reboot. So now, when I pull back, they both go forward, which will pull up. They go back, both can go back. When I go right, it pulls. And when I go left, that one pulls. So we're all good. Our servers are wired up properly, and we have proper orientation now. They're moving the right ways. Um, I guess the other, the last thing we'll do while we're in iNav right now, and we have a prop off still, setting things up, we'll do the motor ESC um, calibration. So to do the ESC calibration, we're actually going to power off the battery. So right now, the flight controller is powered, but the motor is not getting any power. In iNav, we're going to come down to the motors tab, and the real brief, uh, real quick, to normally with an older style um, ESC, you would power up your radio, and once it was bound, you power up your radio, go full throttle signal, apply power to the ESC, the ESC will sense the high signal, and then you lower the throttle after a certain set of beeps. And when you lower the throttle, it would go through its initialization, and that would let the ESC know the radio's top and bottom. The problem with a INAF setup is you can't do that because the radio won't talk to the ESC until it's armed, and you can't arm until it's all booted, and the ESC will already be loaded blah, 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 a whole lot of stuff. What we got to do is get around that by using the INAP configurator. So what we're going to do is we go into the motors tab, and we're going to select this, I understand the propellers are removed, we do have the propeller removed, and we're going to enable motor control. We're going to bring this up. So right now, our aircraft is sending full, its full signal out for the motor, so at the top end of the ESC signal. So what we're going to do then is power up, you know, hear the ESC do its tones, and then it's waiting. Now I'm going to slide it back down to the bottom. And there it's going through. The, the rapid beeping after I lowered it was it saying, okay, now I feel the bottom end, or I know where the bottom end is. And uh, at this point you can actually bring it up. And it'll start spinning. What I'm doing right now, you can't see it because I'm not moving the arrow, but I'm using the, uh, or the slider right using the arrow key. If you want to do, if you want to do uh, slow movement instead of the throttle, you can just click the slider and then use the arrows. You notice it goes up in one degree increments. So. so we've got the motor going now, um, but the one thing we can check real quick by using the arrow and going off slowly, it's about 70, this one's starting, is looking at our motor. 
We are spinning this way. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and change the direction on the ESC so the motor spins this way. And it's spinning that way right now. So what we're going to do is uh, go in here to the BL Heli configurator. We'll connect with just the USB connected. And now that we're connected, we go ahead and power on the ESC. And we can come down here and hit read setup. And it's going to talk to it and we get all this information. So what we can do, we can check and make sure the firmware is up to date. Put it on the latest, 16.7. Okay, so it's doing that. Okay, so the firmware splashed on there. I'm going to go ahead and hit read setup again. So it refreshes. Okay, what we need to do is motor direction we need to reverse. Um, I'm also going to make this max 1950. Ish. Okay, and then after we do that, we're going to go ahead and right set up. So now we'll go ahead and disconnect here. Go back over to iNav. We'll connect. Go back to the motors tab. I understand. Or slowly bring it up. And now you can see the motor is spinning in this direction. So we're good to go now. And it's going to work great for our GemFam Flash 6042 prop. This thing is an awesome prop. I'm loving it. My problem is they are quad props, so you get two regular, two reverse. And I've got all props that I need the regular props. I don't need the reverse props, so I'm piling up a bunch of other props. But um, yeah, good props. And this will uh, pop right on there. Always numbers forward and we'll be good to go. So we'll go ahead and, uh, it's actually going to be a reverse prop, I just realized. So ignore that part about that. But yeah, I've got the, the other prop I have a bunch of. So um, I'll bring this down real quick. The one thing I am going to do though, um, I'm going to just take power from the ESC, go to full signal, power up again and go through ESC calibration since I changed that. Should be good. So again, 70 is about our minimum. We're good to go. So that's how you make sure all your electronics are set up so far with just the basics. Um, really, we could go ahead and once we get the control horns on.